Warm welcome, my dear students, for the new lecture for your design of concrete structures. Till now, we were discussing on the limit set of flexure. That is, when you are applying a load, uh, the profile due to the load applied, the compression will be at the top and the tension will be at the bottom. And in order to carry the tension, the reinforcement is provided. The flexural moment due to the flexural moment, the reinforcement is provided at the bottom. Then it is called as a single reinforced. And if it is provided at the both both bottom and top. Then it is a double reinforced section. So till now we have discussed when the flexure comes, how how to resist that flexural. Now we are going to discuss the second limit state of collapse. That is, we have studied in limit state of method. There are two limit state of collapse and limit state of serviceability. In limit state of collapse, we have flexure, shear, compression, and torsion. Now, now the flexure is done. Now you need to discuss the second one. That is, in your in, in, when the when the limb state of collapse shear occurs, we need to see how the how the reinforcement uh, concrete resist that shear. So that is that will be dealt in this lecture. Suppose you are having a simply supported beam like this. I am applying a load over here. I am applying a small load over here, W kilonewton, a point load. So it deflects like this, and the cracks will be formed in this way. You see, the cracks will be formed. Generated like this. Since concrete is a brittle material, the cracks will be formed like this. You can see here. So, if I am taking, I have done an experiment in the lab, and you can see this is a two-point load, and the crack developed. You can see like this. So this crack developed. If you take it like this, can be arrested if I am providing reinforcement like this. That is, this crack which will be developing like this will be will will end or will be resisted by some force will be resisted by some some uh, material and that is called as your vertical stirrup this is called as vertical stirrup so in order to avoid this crack we will provide the vertical stirrup and that are provided in this way that is along with your compression reinforcement that is to resist flexure this is to resist flexure and this is also to resist flexure and Along with this resisting this flexure, we will provide the stirrups to resist the shear. That is, the shear is resisted by the action of the reinforcement at the top, bottom, as well as the stirrups which are provided. The stirrups which are provided. If I am taking the cross section and taking the cross section like this, I am taking the cross section here, then you can see this is your compression reinforcement. This is your tension reinforcement. That is your AST. You can see these are your stirrups. So now onwards, the beam will be represented along with the stirrups to resist the shear force also. So in real life, you can see the beam in the 3D view. You can see like this. That is the bottom. You can see these are the tension reinforcement and these are the compression reinforcement along with that at sufficient spacing that will denote this as SV spacing of the shear reinforcement will be providing at sufficient spacing will be providing the shear for shear reinforcement in the form of stirrups so you can see the uh, cross section of this view you can see the cross section of this view and in real life you can see this form it is being provided like this but this is not the actual case nowadays we will provide this we will bend this we will bend this in this direction we will bend this in this direction
types of arrangement of shear reinforcement according to IS 456-2000 that is you have your uh, compression reinforcement and tension reinforcement and the stirrups will be provided in vertical direction that is it will be provided exactly perpendicular to your compression and tension reinforcement such type of stirrups is called as vertical stirrups now the stirrups will be provided in inclined stirrups as inclined stirrups that is we will provide the stirrups in inclination that is the crack is going to develop like this so we will provide the stirrup opposite to the occurrence of the crack and this is called as inclined stirrups the third one is bend of bars that is bend of bars along with you can write along with inclined or vertical stirrups that is we will not provide this bend of bar alone that is you, if you are having i am taking the plan view of this suppose you are having four you are having four reinforcements 
at the tension side. Uh, when I am reaching this position, I will bend this bar to the top. The alternate bars will be bent at the top. The alternate bars will be bent like this at the top. At this position also, I will bend this bar at the top, towards the top. And this type of arrangement is called as that is alternate bars of this beam will be bent at certain distance. That distance we will study later at certain distance. And along with this bent up bar, we will provide the vertical or inclined stirrup. Such kind of shear reinforcement also can be provided. As we have seen in the video, according to IS 13920 2016, the hooks are provided in this way such that this distance should not should be. A minimum of 6 diameter or 65 mm. A minimum of 65 mm or 6 times diameter of the bar used for the link. This angle should be preferably 135 degree. And you can see as a note, this is called as a two leg stirrup because the legs for connecting or uh, taking the shear is being like this. And if I am cutting a section like this, the resisting shear, this is this is phi, this angle is phi, then the resisting shear is phi by 4 into phi square area resistance shear is pi by 4 into phi square and this is pi by 4 into phi square that is the total area i could write it as a asv that is area of shear reinforcement i could write it as 2 into if there is 2 link then it is 2 legs to then 2 into pi by 4 into phi square now when the width of the beam exceeds 300 mm a cross tie has to be provided that is when the width of the beam is greater than 300 mm the spacing between the stirrups will be very much high. At that case, I according to IS 13920 2016, that is your uh, ductly code for ductility designing detailing. Close number 7.4.2. You can see when the width of the beam is greater than 300 mm, a cross tie has to be provided. That is, we will provide a cross tie like this. A cross tie will be provided like this. And here you can see when I am taking a section, there are three legs. Three legs like this. That is, this kind of stir, uh, stirrup arrangement is called as three leg stirrup, and the corresponding area of shear reinforcement I will get as ASV is equal to three into. If this is phi, this uh, radius uh, diameter is phi. This diameter is phi. This diameter is phi. Then three into pi by four into phi square. That will be the area of the shear reinforcement. Now you consider a simply supported beam like this. It is having the supports at the either ends. The top and bottom reinforcement, that is the compression and tension reinforcement, will be placed like this. Now, if I draw the bending moment and shear force diagram for this, the idlest beam will be like this. The beam is like this. If I draw the bending moment, it should be coming like this. This is W kilonewton meter, that is a factored load. Then the and this span is L. Then the bending moment maximum BM maximum will be W L square by H. And if I am drawing the shear force, I'll be getting a shear force like this, and this value is W L by 2. That is, this beam is experiencing a bending a flexure bending moment like this. Tension, uh, failure due to tension can occur and the failure due to tension or compression can occur due to bending and failure due to shear can occur. That is a combination of these two will act and the failure or the cracks will be developed due to these things. So if I see, if I see in the previous videos you have seen the crack developed. So you can see, <coughs> you can see the cracks are developed at the supports in this way. The cracks are developed in this way at the supports. It is at 45 degree the cracks are developed and at the mid span if I am seeing it is developing like this that is at the beginning it will be 90 degree then 45 degree then 90 degree. So I will call this type of crack as number 1 and this is 2 and you can see some type of crack being developed like this here at this point. So I will call it as 3. Failure which occurs due to this crack is called as diagonal tension failure and the second second failure which occurs due to this kind of skull this kind of crack or this kind of failure is called as flexural shear failure and the third one is occurring at the compression zone and that is called as the diagonal compression failure diagonal compression failure so you can see here 
these type of cracks occurs now you can see this at this point if i'm seeing here the bending moment is very much low but the shear force is very much high that is the diagonal tension failure occurs due to high shear force and low bending moment that is it occurs at the inner support inner side of the support that is due to high shear force and low bending moment and this flexural shear failure it occurs at the top and bottom it is 90 degree it is at top and bottom you could see this is 90 degree and between the reinforcement it is 45 degree and between the reinforcement it is 45 degree this occurs due to large bending moment you can see at the mid span the bending moment is very large but the shear force is very low so this kind of flexural shear failure occurs due to large bending moment and low shear force and the third one that is the diagonal compression failure this occurs under large shear force characterized by crushing of the concrete here what happens is due to high shear force high compression will occur and the crushing of the concrete in between these layers will take place and this type of failure is called as diagonal compression failure so this ends uh, today's lecture in the next class we will see the design procedures and how to design uh, the reinforcement or how to provide the reinforcement in the rc structure to resist the shear thank you